The yield curve in the United States uninverted in the month of August. That means the yield curve went from being below zero, which is called an inversion, and into positive territory. This is a signal that occurred in May of 2007, a few months before the start of the global financial crisis, and in November of 2000, a few months before the 2001 recession began. In fact, every single time that this signal was triggered throughout history, it was right before an economic downturn in the United States. Even right before the Great Depression in the 1930s, the yield curve uninverted in October of 1929, right at the onset of the Great Depression. The reason this works so well is because the yield curve essentially shows us how financial markets are currently pricing in the state of the labor market. You can see the unemployment rate highlighted right here follows the exact path of the yield curve at any given point in time. When the yield curve is inverted, like in these instances, it means the labor market is very hot, and that often coincides with the moment where the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates and tightening monetary policy to cool down the labor market. As the yield curve uninverts and steepens, it means the Federal Reserve is loosening monetary policy because the labor market is cooling down and the unemployment rate is typically rising. And you can see this time has absolutely not been any different. We have the yield curve that's steepening and coming out of an inversion right as the unemployment rate in the United States has really begun to move higher. So does that mean that we're in the process of entering a recession where the yield curve is likely to steepen and the unemployment rate is likely to rise? Because if that's the case, that would be very concerning for the stock market. The yield curve steepening throughout 2023 brought the stock market down for a 10% correction. The yield curve steepening that we had between June and August of 2024 also brought the S&P 500 down for a 10% correction. If the yield curve were to continue steepening, it would mean more recessionary fears and it would bring the S&P 500 down as that's happening. Now, eventually, we think that's the direction that we're going to be heading into. And the stock market correction that we saw throughout the month of July and August was just a little bit of a taste of what's actually going to happen when the recession materializes. But you can see what's been happening more recently is that the yield curve is actually cooled back down, and the stock market as a result has been able to recover. This is what you call a whipsaw signal, and it's definitely not the first time that we've witnessed this. If we rewind to 2006, you can see it inverted initially in February of 2006. Then the yield curve began to uninvert, and this actually coincided with a brief correction in the stock market. Now look at what happened right after that. The yield curve reinverted as the recession was postponed, and that allowed the S&P 500 to break out to new highs. Rewind to 1998, and we also saw the yield curve very briefly invert in July of 1998. That was followed by the yield curve steepening and uninverting, which also coincided with a panic in the stock market where the S&P 500 dropped by 20% during that period. Then look at what happened. You see the yield curve re-inverting as the recession was postponed, and that allowed the stock market to surge back to all-time high. Again, let's rewind to 1989. The yield curve inverted in the first half of 1989, and then uninverted throughout the month of June and July of 1989. But yet again, you can see the recession only occurred in mid-1990. So this signal right here was actually a whipsaw signal and led to a full yield year where the stock market continued to trend higher. So basically, over the last 40 years, we've had three whipsaw signals associated with yield curve inversions. So is that what we're witnessing today, where this was only a brief whipsaw signal that would allow the stock market rally to continue higher like it did in these instances? Right now, that's exactly what seems to be happening. And this is what we warned our members about right as the yield curve was uninverting and you had everyone talk about a recession. The problem at that moment for us was that there was no clear catalyst that was pushing the economy into a recession. You see, every single recession that we've witnessed throughout U.S. financial history has been triggered by some kind of a catalyst. In 1990, it was the invasion of Kuwait that triggered an oil shock. In 2000, it was the tech bubble that burst where millions of tech jobs were lost, dragging the economy into a recession. And in 2007, it was the housing bubble that was bursting that led to a collapse in consumer spending and consumer confidence, which again led the economy into a recession. Now, don't get me wrong. The economy is ripe for a recession. We think it's only a matter of time before this chart starts to look something like this. This has actually been the longest yield curve inversion since 1929, where the yield curve was inverted for over 700 days. This is a 
chart that we've shown before plotting the number of days where the yield curve was inverted against the size of the market drawdowns that you typically see in the recession that follows. When the yield curve is inverted for a shorter period of time, it leads to shallower stock market corrections because the recessions are not as severe. When the yield curve is inverted for a longer period of time, it suggests that monetary policy has probably been too tight for too long, which historically has caused some pretty severe market drawdowns like the 1974, the 2008, and 1929 crashes. Today we are around here, which in our opinion puts the market at risk of a massive drawdown when the recession actually materializes. Now I'm not going to get into our exact investment strategy in this video, but the trades that we have on our website at gameoftrades.net are very nicely positioned for market strength heading into a recession while also being increasingly hedged against the possibility of seeing a large drawdown in the market. And if stocks continue to rise from these levels, we'll continue to transfer our gains from these bets into our recessionary hedges. If you want to have access to all of our trades, make sure to sign up to our website at gameoftrades.net. You will not regret it.